Hi there, my name is Devin Beatty, and I'm with the UF IFAS Extension Office of Sarasota County. This presentation is all about understanding your utilities on a better level. So if you're unfamiliar with the Extension Office, we are a partnership between Sarasota County on the local level, University of Florida on the state level, and the USDA on the federal level. We use these different interactions and these different levels of government to address localized needs through the varying research resources and expertise that we have access to. And as these localized needs are specific to each county, we have six specific program areas in Sarasota County, ranging from agriculture to gardening and landscaping, natural resources, nutrition and healthy living, sustainability, and youth development. This is just a reminder that we are an equal opportunity institution and there is contact information on the screen to file a discrimination complaint if needed. Today's agenda is going to include how to read your water and electricity bills and how to read your water meter, as well as how you can save water and electricity at home. And then we'll go over some financial assistance and incentives. Let's start off with how much water do we use? So your water bill is going to show your gallons used every monthly cycle. And for perspective, standard bathtub holds about 70 gallons of water. Standard rectangular pool holds about 19,200 gallons of water. Keeping track of this number is helpful for noticing any patterns or any changes over time. And just for some additional perspective, the additional, the average, excuse me, individual in Sarasota County uses about 80 gallons a day and the average household uses about 158 gallons a day. So starting off, let's look at an example water bill from Sarasota County Utilities. You'll notice these boxes on the top row from left to right refer to the service period, which are the days out of the month that you've been billed. The right side, those three boxes represent your water meter readings. So essentially, they will just subtract your current from, or your, excuse me, your previous from your current reading. And that's the usage number that they use to charge you. This bottom rectangle will show your actual charges related to your water usage. So you might see it says $2.72 for every thousand gallons of water used. And then your consumption says 3.6. That's not 3.6 gallons of water used, that's 3,600 gallons of water used. So you wanna multiply that consumption number by 1,000 to get your total number of gallons that you've used every day. When you multiply that charge number, or the, excuse me, the water rate by how many gallons you've used, you'll get your charges, add that to the water base charge, which every customer is charged equally, and you get your total water usage charge all the way on the right. Moving on to how to read your water meter. You can look at your water meter box outside. Typically it's buried, it might be covered with some dirt. You can use a screwdriver to open the lid. Sometimes you may need to because it might just be stuck. And if needed, you can also use a screwdriver to remove the cap on top of the dial. It, looks, it should look like this, it should be round and the dial has numbers zero through nine. So this tracks your gallons of water used. And if you look at arrow number three, this is the number that the utility companies will use for that reading on your bill. And as we noticed before, the numbers looked a little funky and needed to be multiplied a few times on your bill to get your actual usage. Well, as you can see, the dial only goes up to nine. So every time it goes past nine, a one is added to the gallons line and so forth. So the gallons are actually measures of 10. Now let's talk about some quick ways that we can conserve water at home. Outdoor water usage and irrigation is the biggest user of water in every American household. It's typically about 50% or more of the home's total water usage. Latest study actually shows that each time you irrigate your lawn or your landscaping, you use about 991 gallons of water. So that means if we have one event or one irrigation event every week, that adds up to 51,532 gallons of water annually. So talking about how we can save water outdoors, check your system's rain sensor if it has one. 
If you do have an irrigation system, typically the rain sensor will shut your irrigation off if it has rain, so that way it's not overwatering anything. Getting the right plants will help to make sure that you're basically watering as efficiently as you can because your plants can deal with maybe longer periods without water. Um, also following water restrictions, they're there for a reason. Um, they're there to help prevent inefficient irrigation techniques. Also using drip or micro irrigation is very, very efficient. Checking for wasted water or leaks is always a good idea. Mulching your plants, making a rain barrel is a great way to collect rainwater after any kind of a rainstorm and reuse. Practicing good mowing, the recommended height is only mowing the first third of the height of the grass. And watching the weather so that way you can time when you irrigate your plants with when it might rain or when you might have a dry spell outside. Moving to indoor water usage, the biggest user of water is going to be our toilet, followed by the shower, just general use by faucets, and then your clothes washer. Talking about some quick ways to save water indoors, we recommend using and installing low flow shower heads and faucet aerators, taking shorter showers whenever possible, installing a water efficient toilet, turning off the water when you're brushing your teeth or you're shaving, Scraping your plate instead of rinsing it with water when you put it in the dishwasher. Only running your dishwasher and your washing machines when they have full loads. Reusing towels whenever possible. And getting water leaks fixed. You'll notice leaks are kind of a recurring theme here. Um, well, that's just because we want to make sure that you're using whatever you're being charged for as smartly and efficiently as possible. And if you have leaks, you're basically being charged for water that you're not using. So it's always important to take care of leaks. Now let's move on to some energy tips on how to read your energy bill. Starting off, so here's some pictures of an energy bill if you are an FPL customer in Sarasota County. On the left side, you'll notice that first arrow is pointing to the energy usage history. That shows your energy usage over the past year, shown in a bar graph, so it's a good visual representation. The left of that bar graph, on that same row the arrow is pointing to, you'll notice the current bill box. That shows how much you owe for this month and when that bill is due. Then on the right side, some other helpful tips and things to look for. The meter summary at the top is your electric meter reading from the current and previous, just like with the water bill. It shows your current usage in that month. And then the energy usage comparison is also a really great, helpful thing that they include on their bills. It allows you to compare your energy usage from this month to this time last month as well as this month to this time last year. So it's very helpful, again, for what I like to call playing detective. An example of the energy dashboard shows your energy usage over time. This is just a short, small example of it, but if you've lived in your home for a few years, it might be a little bit longer and have a longer history. It will just show how much you've been paying for your electricity each month, or you can also adjust it to show the daily use, weekly use, monthly use, yearly use, um, virtually any kind of time frame you'd like. And you can also control for temperature and humidity to see how it's affected your energy usage. And there's also a ways to save function, which asks you some survey questions. And then based off those survey questions, FPL will estimate where they think you're using your energy in your home. So in this example, based on the survey responses that a client gave, they believed that their water heater was the main reason why they were experiencing really high energy bills, especially if your water heater is almost a quarter of your energy bill. That's probably not normal. Um, so that's likely what this customer was dealing with, was a water heater temperature that was probably too high. And this analyzer function shows you both of those tools combined into one. So it, it'll show you the bar graph function so you can see and kind of compare the billing cycles as well as where they estimate energy was being used in each of those billing cycles retroactively. Starting off with where energy is being used in our homes, the main end use in climates that are described as hot and humid. So just like in Florida is going to be air conditioning followed by water heating, and then just standard space heating. All other appliances and end uses are in the single digits, but they're still pretty high, such as lighting and refrigerators. Let's go into some no-cost energy savings tips. 
Some basic ones to start off with, turn off your lights, fans, electronics when you leave the room. It's kind of a given. If you're not there, you don't need to be using the power in the room. Setting your thermostats when you're at home versus when you're away. You can actually maximize your efficiency and it's actually better for your air conditioner in the long run to change the temperatures when you're at home versus when you're away. Essentially, the concept there is you don't need to be cooling or heating your house if you're not there to enjoy it. Turn down your water heater thermostat to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So we mentioned that in that FPL example of their online tool, but a lot of water heaters are installed at a standard of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a really good way that you can kind of save some money on water heating. It still heats your water to the proper temperature. It's still um, safe enough, so it won't it won't breed any microorganisms or bacteria. So it's still safe and comfortable to use. Then also taking shorter showers. So we recommend about five minutes or less. Some no cost ventilation tips are First and foremost, don't block your air vents. Helps to avoid airflow problems, but this goes for vents that are in the ceiling or if they're in the floor as well. You wanna move couches and bookshelves and beds away from the vents just because anything that's getting in the way of that airflow is gonna prevent it from fully circulating in your room. Dusting and vacuuming your thermostats, your heating coils, fins, and fan blades regularly. It really does make a difference and it will help them to work more efficiently. Closing your drapes and your windows during sunny summer days, as well as after sunset in the winter. So this essentially works by just adding an extra layer of insulation on your windows. So closing your drapes and your windows and your blinds and any curtains basically acts as a blanket. So in the summer, it'll keep that heat out. And in the winter, it'll actually keep that cool air out. And then also exhaust fans are a huge gold standard that we love to recommend. They just work really well at removing humidity, hot air, um, and just making a room more comfortable. They may be a little loud, but especially in the bathroom and kitchen where we do have a higher risk of growing mold in those areas, they're really good at reducing the risk of mold and mildew and just keeping them keeping those spaces a little bit cooler. Moving on to some appliance tips. Your refrigerator and your freezer, the more full it is, the more efficiently it'll work. So a good way to think about this is when you're, when you're in Florida and there's a hurricane season and maybe you have a power outage, if your freezer is more full, those items will actually stay colder for longer because they just work to keep each other colder for longer. So the fuller it is, the more it'll work to keep your food cold and the more efficiently it works. Check the gasket seal on your fridge and freezer. So we recommend the dollar bill test. Just take a dollar bill, fold it in half and close your fridge door on it. If the dollar bill just falls right out onto the floor, then your gasket seal in your refrigerator is probably bad. And what that means is you could have the cold refrigerated air entering your home, or you could have some of your warm air in your house entering your refrigerator and just kind of rendering it useless. So that's a good easy fix and a good easy test to make sure your fridge is working properly. For laundry, washing clothes in cold water, only washing in full loads, um, that helps to reduce the demand on your water heater so you're not using as much hot water over and over again for different loads of laundry. Air drying your clothes wherever possible. If you're using a dryer, clean the lint trap after each use. So that's not only an efficiency tip, that's also a safety tip because dryer lint can be flammable. For entertainment systems, turning off your electronics completely, adjusting the contrast and lowering the volume as well. So it's a similar concept with your telephone or your cell phone. If your brightness and your volume is all the way up on your phone, then the battery is probably gonna drain a lot quicker. Same concept with your TV. If it's really loud and if, it's, if the brightness is set all the way up, then it's gonna be drawing more electricity the longer time that it's on. Also looking at energy saving settings on these appliances, because as I always like to say, they're there for a reason. So they will help your appliances to run smoother using less energy. Now let's move on to some low cost energy savings tips. Regarding cooling, fans are always a good way to go because they use less energy than air conditioning. You do wanna turn them off when they're not when you are not in the room. As we always like to say, fans cool people and not rooms. Energy Star fans save 50% more energy than other fans on the market. So those are always good designations to look for if you're looking for a ceiling fan. 
And also many fans have switches on their bases that actually change the direction these fan blades spin. So in the summertime, you want to make sure the fan blades are spinning counterclockwise. And in the wintertime, you want to make sure those fan blades are spinning clockwise because if they're spinning clockwise, they do actually work to pull the cold air up from away from you and actually push warmer air down towards you. So it actually does work and serve a different function. So that's something to also keep in mind and help your fan work for you. Installing a programmable thermostat is a really good idea and a good investment. They make them now that are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. So you can change and program your thermostat from wherever you are, as long as you have Wi-Fi. And cleaning or replacing your air conditioner filter as needed is also really big. Also helps the long-term health of your air conditioner. It'll help your air quality. And it'll just help to make sure that you are actually getting your house cooled or warmed as properly as you'd like. And then also just a reminder here to adjust your thermostat for energy savings. Low cost lighting tips, look for energy star bulbs and fixtures wherever possible. LEDs are always a good way to go because they are way more efficient than both CFLs and incandescent light bulbs. An example we like to give just to show how good and how efficient they are is that for every dollar in energy you save on lighting related costs, you save an extra 30 cents in air conditioning costs. That's just because LEDs are that much more efficient. They work that much better. They produce that much less heat. Um, so they are really a good way to go and a really easy first step to transition to making your home more efficient. Then another lighting tip we recommend is installing a motion sensor on any outdoor lights you have. They actually sell a lot now at many big box stores that are solar powered and motion censored. So it doesn't even draw any extra electricity on your house and it's still motion censored for that safety factor. Vampire loads are the electricity that any electronic that you leave plugged in at your house is drawing even when they're turned off. And that can add up to about 75% of the electricity that's used to power these devices in your home. So we always like to say and share that if it has a light or that device is warm to the touch, it is using energy. So good recommendation for this, unplug it, turn it off, turn it all the way off, but most importantly, unplug it. Incentives and financial assistance. So now we'll just talk about some opportunities for bill payment assistance or some financial incentives that could help you as well. Regarding the bill payment assistance, FPL, our utility provider, offers budget billing. So most utility companies do offer this program. So if you're new to the area, you may have had this before or maybe this is your first time experiencing budget billing, but it's a really great way to make sure that you're paying a similar amount on your electricity bills every month. They base it off your prior 12 months of bills, so you do have to live in your space for a full year and be an FPL customer for a year, but it allows for predictable electricity bills, so it's really good for budgeting out your money. Also for direct assistance, there is a federal program called Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or we call it LIHEAP. It's run through the Salvation Army here in Sarasota County, and they offer direct payments to FPL on your behalf. If you're behind on bills, or if you're facing a crisis, they'll help you with additional bills outside of their typical threshold. And there's also the Elderly Home Energy Assistance Program available too. And this is for households with at least one resident over the age of 60 to run through senior friendship centers here in Sarasota County. One incentive that's offered here is the Office of Housing and Community Development's Rehabilitation Program for Sarasota County residents or residents of the city of Sarasota or the city of Northport. It's a 0% interest loan with deferred payments as long as the home is owner occupied. There is a maximum home value of $272,000 and they do cap those loans at $60,000, but there are lots of repairs that qualify listed right here on the screen. And if you're interested in this, for more information, we have a phone number and website also available on the screen for you. The Energy Upgrade Program is what I do in my position as the Energy Program Specialist. We do everything from in-home retrofits to one-on-one -on -one consultations with any residents that are experiencing really high utility or water bills. So this is just to promote our program and offer our resources as well through the extension office. 
we offer a lot of incentives as well for the state and federal and local levels too. So the website to check out is desireusa.org for any incentives offered in the area. Florida alone, for example, has 101 different incentives they offer from sales tax exemptions to property tax incentives, rebates, loans, grants. And that's the end. <laughs>